Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, geez, I'm I'm sorry I took a took a little hiatus there for a couple weeks there, but I'm back. And I got a I got a, a nice beer here. This is look at that glass. It looks like a beer can. That says it's hard to say on there. It's hard to see. I can't even see it, but it does say something. This is a, this was a gift, by the way. It came in a package, which I will be showing you in a few minutes. But first, I want to show you what I'm up to here. This is a Heffa Wheat beer. I believe this is it right here. Uh, that particular kit, which was sent to me by Marco. Marco sent me a bunch of these, so there you go. And so that's kind of why I got a box of stuff here, um, which I'll show you in a second. But first, I need this for just a minute. Cheers, 17. Oh, mmm, a little bit of lime in there maybe, but I don't have any. It's good beer. Nothing wrong with that beer. Okay, so what's happening here? Okay, so I ordered this from Ontario Beer Kegs, and what I've got is some packing material and my little receipt there, which I should probably keep for one reason or another. First thing that's in here, bought a one pound bag of Cascade Leaf Hops. That was $19 and change, okay? There was a reason for this. I'm not gonna use it for making, you know, beers like this. I'm using this to dry hop. And so, we'll just put that aside. I'm gonna actually do that in a minute. Um, I'll show you my method of dry hopping beer in a keg, okay? And then, also, I've got a bunch of, um, can you see this? Can you guys see that? I can't see my monitor lower that thing. You can see all that stuff in there. This is all dry malt extract, so I try to buy it in bulk, um, and I have it sent to me. It's I guess it's Reese Golden Light dry malt extract. They're 500 gram, well, one pound bags. I got like 10 of them or something like that. So there's two bags there of 10 each. And then I bought some of this Bavarian wheat um, because these, uh, these Coopers, I know I'm doing the kids again, well, who cares? Um, these call for wheat malt extract. So I thought, hey, I didn't do this one with wheat malt extract, I just used regular. So what I wanna do is I wanna make it strictly a wheat beer next time I make one. So that's why I bought, I bought three of them. Well, two is gonna be for one beer, cause that's what they want. The third one I'm gonna do with dextrose, see if there's any difference at all or much of a difference. So that's what I have in there. So let me get that out of the way so we can move on to what I'm going to do here. I'll just put this down somewhere. Well, there's a space, if there's a space. Okay, now, I'm trying to get things cleaned up. Now, here, what I've got is I've got a keg. I'm going to try to lift this. It's full. Okay, so that's the full keg. I just filled it with this beer, which is a Ruby Porter. Now, I like the beer. I've had it before, and actually last time I made it, I dry hopped it, and I'll show you how I did it, and it was good. It was very nice. It was like a dark IPA. So what I did was I took this. This is what I call a rat trap, and I tied a piece of tooth floss, dental floss onto the thing there. That was by the direction of, um, of Corin Zenith from Australia. Uh, he told me how to do that and he actually he actually told me about this thing so um, what you do is you um, it's, it's a very fine mesh I, hope, I don't know if you'd be able to if the camera will go in on that or well, what the focus will do but very fine mesh and you just pop the lot lid off you put some hops in here and I just have to wash the lid a little bit there I forgot and then you just drop it into your keg and it it almost immediately almost within about three to four hours if you once your beer starts to get cold and if you want to force carbonate it or do it overnight or whatever you want to do you can taste those hops um so um the reason why i bought the um the leaf hops is because they're cheaper i don't know why they're cheaper why are they cheaper so uh they take up more space you know but uh you don't get as much uh, residue powdery residue with them so what i'm going to do is i'm going to open these right now i have not opened you can't smell anything so these are sealed as they can get get some scissors over here and uh i do apologize by the way for the uh you know for not having a video out lately there's been stuff going on which i won't get into 
Um, good stuff though, mostly. Ha 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 Now, unfortunately, the bag isn't resealable, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. Um, I'll have to figure something out. I never thought of that, but I'll do that off camera. What I'm gonna do, I hope, is measure out an ounce of leaf hops. And uh, I'm doing this just quickly here, just to show you, I don't wanna spill anything. 0.9 ounces, there we are. 1.1, that'll do it. And so now I can see, put that over there, I can see that just by filling this thing up, really this little container of mine, sort of up to the brim there, I get about an ounce of hops. So, you know, whatever, it's not, it's not crucial. Now where'd I put that? Where'd I put that thing? There it is. So now, now, how do I get those hops into this? Well, I grab my big, pathetic funnel, and this is probably not gonna work, but let's try it. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, that worked wonderfully, didn't it? Okay, let's see. <laughs> see how many of them are gonna go. No, nope, they're not gonna go. Okay, so that didn't work, and that's fine. Now I'm gonna have to deal with with that. Isn't that amazing? Now I've, what I've, a problem I've created for myself. Okay, we're good. I I just poured them into this big container here, and I'm just taking them and just putting them in here like that inside the container because they're messy. That's I guess that's really the thing I never thought of. If you buy the leaf, you know the loose leaf hops like this rather than the um, pellet hops, is these are messier. I mean I've spilt some all over my bench. So, there you go. So there's an ounce. I love the smell of hops. Love them. So these are gonna, this is an ounce. I've done an ounce before, and the last time I did this, I did use pellets, so it wasn't as messy as this. There we go. There's your rat trap. Don't ask me where I got this from. I, it came from Timbuktu, I, and it took a long time to get here. It took several months to get here. I didn't even think it was gonna get here. And, but if you can find one of these, I don't know what it's called. I just call it the rat trap. We should actually, Put, you know, we should get a bunch of these. Someone should, and you know, we'll get it embossed. So you know, it's it's made for us, our home brewers. Call it the home brew rat trap, the hop rat trap. Well, well, anyways, no matter. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this into the keg. Okay, so there's no pressure in there yet. Get that off of there. It's pretty full. I just kegged this a few minutes ago, and I'm gonna have to probably have to do this kind of slowly until the hops absorb. Otherwise, we're gonna overflow. So let's get it down there. I'm gonna I'm gonna just hold this here, and I'll stop the camera. And when it's ready to go in, I'll put the lid on. Well, it's going in the refrigerator for a few days, and I will purge this with some CO2, and then I'll carbonate it and then next week we'll have a taste. Okay, all right, let's move on. All right, so uh, a couple weeks ago, I was sent this liquid malt extract beer kit, pre-hopped beer kit. This is not a Cooper's. Um, this came from a grocery store, which a uh, chain which I have called No Frills. Or no frills um, and the fellow uh, Richard who sent me this found this in his no frills near where he lives and I think he said it was $15.99 um, which is a little bit uh, cheaper than the Coopers um, so he sent this to me to try now you can see that so I'll run down the side there because I, I brewed this up and I have it right here it's been poured for about two minutes and there it is and it's not looking too bad so let's give this a whirl. Um, it is a, let's put that down for a sec. Sorry, I should have. This is a, um, it's a draft. So it's just a basic, you know, beer. Now I did the five and seven with it, which means I put 500 grams of dry malt extract and 700 grams of dextrose. I know that's a lot of dextrose, but that's what I do and it works. So it gives me a little extra alcohol for my little bang, extra bang for my buck, if you will. So, um, it's a draft. It's it's uh, not that not that clear. Now I have only got one hand here because I'm holding my camera with the other hand. 
so I can't clear off the glass. Let me see if I can. There. Yeah, no, it's still a little bit hazy, but it doesn't have much of a nose, um, which a uh, draft beer wouldn't. It's kind of a, a milder, not a very hoppy beer at all. I tasted it when I first kegged it, and it was, oh, it was a little weird tasting. I think something happened with the yeast, but um, let's give it a whirl. Cheers. Huh. Hey. Jeez, that's not bad. Excuse me, that's not too bad at all. That's not a bad beer. I wonder who makes... I bet you... I wonder Coopers makes these things. You never know. These big companies, they, they make little spin-offs. Look at this lacing and everything. That's not too bad, guys. Hmm. That's very refreshing. It doesn't have a ton of anything, really. It's not like a super hoppy beer. It doesn't have a huge malt backbone to it. It's not like super... Um, it's not super malty or anything like that. It basically just tastes like a you went into a pub and you asked them for a draft. And that's what you got. So what we'll do is we'll grab the UPC code off of the back of this and we'll see what we can do. I got a friend who lives not too far from me who actually might be able to find out about this. So I'm gonna show that. You guys might be able to if you got a high res camera. I mean, if you're watching this at high def, there it is right there. So anyways, we'll see what we can do. But that's not a bad beer at all. Not at all. I would make this again. Uh, it's nothing spectacular. It certainly has no off flavors. It doesn't have any esters, any weirdness. You could use different yeast. Um, I um, I lost my, my yeast strain that I was using for so long. I left it somewhere after too long and it went rancid and I tried to use it in this beer and it didn't it didn't take. So I ended up adding the yeast that came with the beer on top of the yeast that didn't work. So that was a that was a no no and it still tastes perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. That's probably what gave it the weird flavor at first. Yeah, it was perfectly clean. So, not everyone can get this, of course. If you live in the States or somewhere else, you're not going to be able to find this. But for you people who live around here, let's get after our no frills people and say, hey, we want you to put this in one of your sections and let us buy it. So that'd be really cool. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the other guy. Cheers. 17. We have a box and we have a beer. Let me get this. I know my head's a bit cut off because I think you want to see the box more than my head. This glass here came in this box. It says the brew hub. It says something on the bottom there, but I can't read it yet. I have to finish the beer first. I don't think I'll have too many problems with that. Okay, so what do we got in here? I don't want to spill. This is a interesting collection of stuff that I'm going to be brewing up here um, very shortly. There's a note. It says, thank you for the large print, by the way. I appreciate that. It says, hey, I don't have my glasses either. I've lost them. I hung them up somewhere. I can't find them. Uh, I decided on the Apricot Blonde Kit because it's their largest seller in the tap room and accounts that they have around town. Okay. It was also my favorite from them before. I went to the dark side and started drinking IPAs and dark hoppy beers. The dark side. Then I also saw that they had a seasonal half moon pumpkin ale. It's one of my favorite seasonal beers that they have on tap. I hope you like pumpkin. Yes, I do. I do. It's also great and makes the package smell so great. I can smell something in this box, for sure. I'm hoping that everything is well sealed and is securely packaged for the long trip. I am excited to have you make the kits so that I can post your videos on Brew Hub's social media website. Yes, of course I'll make a video of some of these. Yes. It's a great homebrew shop and brewery and definitely my favorite in town. I got started brewing after watching your How to Brew video. <laughs> <laughs> and I am always excited to see when you post brewing videos or just videos about beer and stuff. My only regret is that each of the kits is partial mash kits. Actually, they're partial extract kits. I don't have to mash. I looked at them already, so that's okay. I don't mind if they're mash kits anyway, but they're 
extract. So extract and, and, and steeping grains, which is easy. Uh, but I do know that every once in a while you make partial mash kits. I was also happy to find six pack of apricot blonde for your enjoyment. I know it might be hard, but try and save at least one can to compare the beers after it's done. I saved a can. Easy to say, hard to do. <laughs> yeah, no, I saved a can. Take care, Craig. Cheers, 17. Tyrone Johnson, Foam on the Range, Denver Homebrew Club. A Mile High Monks Club member. I hope that pronounced properly. And there's, I guess, their sort of logo things or whatever. Right on, Tyrone. Thanks, bud. And there's some recipes here, it looks like. Some instructions or, or whatever. So I'll take a look at those in a bit. And there's a picture of, you know, the, some of the kits on the shelf, I suppose, there. So, awesome. Okay, let me get into this box. Now, here's what we're going to be doing. Um, some packing material there. Need to back a truck up to this place for all these boxes and everything. Okay, we have two of these. This is liquid malt extract. They spilt a little bit, but they're in bags, so there's no mess. There's one there, and there's a second one here. Uh, let's see where is it. So again, they they had a little. I put a bag under that one because it was a bit sticky, but no, we didn't lose much at all. Very very well packaged. This stuff is, it gets out of any container. Okay, now, here are the kits. They're a little bit um, worse for wear. That's okay. And there's some, there's some stickers and things. I love beer. And Dry Hawk, Dry Dock Brewing Co. Company. So there's some things in there. And another little one here, what does this say? I can't read it, but uh, there it is. Oh, I think that's the Brew Hub thing. The Brew Hub thing. The Brew Hut? Is it Hut? Oh, geez, I don't know. Is it Brew Hut? That's the same as on my glass. Okay, I got it wrong. So we'll save those, and I'll just put the box down on the floor here. And we'll just have a look at these. Now here is a, um, this is the Half Moon Pumpkin Ale beer. So we'll save that one for just a moment. And this one is the Apricot Blonde. So in this one here, if you, I hope you can see this. I think you can. What they've got is the instructions, okay, and they've got some hop bags and whatnot, or steeping bags, whichever, yeah, a steeping bag or both. There's some hops in here. Uh, there is some, a little bag of grains, okay, they smell nice, all right. There's the yeast, which is a US 04, might culture this and, you know, keep using it for a while. And of course, here's the apricot or apricot flavoring agent, okay? So that's how that works. And you combine it with one of these liquid malt extract bags and there you have your, your beer. Awesome, thank you very much, Tyrone. That's gonna be good, don't mind the box. It's the way that went. That's okay, everything's intact. Now the pumpkin one, this one's got, oh, I can smell that. Everything smells like just beauty. Hop bags and steeping bags. Got this, um, this is a organic pumpkin. It's a liquid, so it's some sort of an extract, I guess, you know? So there's that. We've got a yeast package again. We've got um, some, oh, some, some smells like uh, um, cinnamon, hops, and my, my telephone is ringing as well. So I looked at this, it's a pumpkin spice pack. That's what it is, a pumpkin pie spice pack. That's why I looked at the magnifier. So that's what that is. So these are grains. I don't know exactly what they are, um, but on the paper, I read the paper and they're not, they're not base malts, they're actually specialty grains. So I believe that we don't have to, um, we don't have to mash, we just steep them. The instructions say just to steep them, so there. That's all there. Awesome, that's gonna be some nice stuff to brew. I just carried this all the way down from upstairs. Very heavy. Um, the guy who brought this, who delivered it, he he had to use a dolly to get it up the stairs. So what it is, it's a wine kit. And who's, the person who sent it's name is Anthony. I won't say his last name and I won't say his address. Um, and so it's from Costco. 
packing list and it says what's in it. So there you go. Anthony, what the heck, buddy? This is awesome. Let me, I hope you guys can, I should get my, I should, let me move the camera so you can see inside this thing. All right, we've got some corks for corking it, for, you know, bottling it, which I probably will do. I don't usually bottle my wine, but label. So I guess that's what it is. It's a Amarone, and I'm probably mispronouncing that. Whoops, sorry. I don't, mean, I don't mean to make you guys dizzy. This is um, a package of um, obviously dried grape uh, currants. So these are going to go in. I believe they go in at the start. I read the instructions already. Here we have some um, oak chips. Okay. Of course, the instructions, which I've read already, and the, the yeast and all the clearing packages and the stabilizers and all that, that's there. And basically what this is, is it's, it's wine must. I mean, it's not condensed. It's not, um, you don't have to add any water to it. All I got to do is have the wherewithal to lift this thing and pour it into a fermenter, um, add the stuff I just showed you, and then let it go. And it's six weeks. That is awesome. That is the easy, oh, there's some little example thing, shrink wrap things. I guess you just use a hair dryer if you want to make the bottles look nice. So there you have that. Put that all back in there. So that will, I'll do this one homebrew weekly. I'll just do it. I mean, it's not, there's nothing to do, but it's just something to, some content for the weekly videos I do. Thank you very much. I really am hitting the microphone there. Really very excited to make that. It's going to be an awesome, awesome wine. Okay, now, this is another thing I received, and this one, well, this is, this is a, a, a condensed kit. This one here, I do not know where this came from. There was no indication at all that I could find as to where it came from. So if you sent this in, please let me know. But it is a wine kit. And this is typical to the ones I usually do. They're much easier to transport and ship and whatnot. You've got your normal package with the instructions and the, you know, the stuff to put in it, the uh, agents and bentonite and all that stuff. And of course, you got your bladder with the wine, you know, the grape extract in there. That's pretty easy. Thank you, whoever sent this one. If they both came at the same time, maybe they both came from the same person. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I might have it in an email somewhere, but that's hard to. That's hard for me to uh, to sort. I'll put that down there. I'll have to do these really soon so I can get them out of my way. Here I have a, a, a Cooper's um, beer kit. It, this is a Cooper's Irish Stout. Don't know if I've ever done this one. And it comes from Grain to Glass. Grain to Glass Incorporated, is it? Yes. St. Mary's Road in Winnipeg. Okay. I don't, I don't know if they want their address given, but that's, where, that's what they're called, Grain to Glass. Thank you guys, awesome. Um, and you know, uh, this definitely, I'm gonna brew it up the way they say to. And um, so yeah, I mean, I'll do a review on it. I've never done the Irish Stout before, so that's exciting, awesome. I might have missed something. Don't forget, I do have this too. This is probably one of the next things I'm gonna brew. And I don't know who sent this because somebody, I got an email from Marco and he said he sent something different. But the description's different. I don't know if it's you know it's the same if, if he sent this or not. But this is a beer kit that I'll be I'll be doing real soon. It's got all the instructions and all the stuff in there to do. So I have uh, been very fortunate to receive uh, basically the materials to make free beer and wine, and that's cool. That's really awesome. You can't beat free. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much, all you guys gals or whoever who sent all this stuff along and Marco for sending these he had a whole box of these Cooper's kits sent over I uh, I can't thank I can't thank you guys enough all right guys thank you so much for your patience thanks for subscribing to the channel post comments down below what do you think about anything I did tonight criticize me comment on me you know praise me whatever it is you want to do please thumb up the video if you like it that supports the channel and thumb it down if you don't like it. That supports the channel too. A lot of people don't know that thumbs downs actually count as action. You know, as they count as uh, as as you know activity in the video. So it's not a bad thing. But I'd rather the thumbs up because it looks nicer. <laughs> okay. All right. Happy home brewing and thanks everybody for everything. And I'll be back very soon with another video for you within the next few days for sure. Okay. Thank you.
Cheers. 17. Oh. What's that noise? It's not noise. Okay, I'm not sure what that noise was, but uh, something's about to explode, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, okay. Anyways. Oh, I'm leaning. I'm leaning on my induction burner for Pete's sakes. Okay.